Hi everyone and welcome to Crumpton News at Noon. It is good to see you. I'm Laura Papetti. And on this Monday, we are tracking a big winter storm ahead here in the inland northwest. So we are talking about wind, snow, and very bitter cold temperatures. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick, he is joining us now with a look at what we can expect and when we can expect to hit us. Thomas. Hey there, Laura. And I can tell that the word is getting around the newsroom because all the scripts say <laughs> those weather impacts yes. in the correct order. Wind snow cold in that order is what we're going to get. And those are all winter weather impacts, even on what feels like a pretty mild day today. But you probably heard a little bit of wind on the microphone and our wind advisories in tan and high wind warnings go into effect later on tonight, starting at 6 p.m. That's about when the winds will be at their strongest. So it might feel a little breezy right now, but those winds are only going to accelerate throughout the rest of the day. And this would put it at the threshold where we could consider that as a damaging wind. And this is very much a classic windstorm like setup for the region. Low pressure area moving off towards our north, probably more to the north than uh, what would normally be at its peak wind gust. So like if this low pressure area was closer towards that Washington state line, this would be much, much more severe and widespread. But there will be areas that could get those 60 mile per hour wind gusts, which obviously would be quite severe for the region. So the winds have already increased to about 20 miles per hour sustained. Notice how our temperatures are actually quite mild for February standards. We got an outside chance to hit 50 degrees today, which would make it the warmest day of the winter. But that weather just doesn't last at all because after the winds are finished with us tonight, we are immediately back into snowfall by tomorrow morning. So coming up, I'm going to show you how long the strongest winds are going to last for tonight and how much snow is already in the forecast for tomorrow. Again, after what is likely going to be our warmest day of the winter today. All right, my friend, thank you. And as we anticipate snow coming tomorrow, we wanted to revisit what you can do to keep your car winter ready. First, watch your tire pressure. Second, make sure your antifreeze and other fluids are topped off. And it is important that those are rated for below zero temps. Again, as we continue this march through winter. Here are a few more tips you should keep in mind with the cold weather in play. Use de-icer to melt ice on sidewalks and driveways. Keep those clear for visitors and of course for maybe the mailman to come visit to cover any exposed faucets outside. It is also a good idea to have some extra groceries and supplies on hand just in case of any potential power outages. We'll keep you up to date on those. In fact, we'll get you the latest weather updates. So be sure to download the CREM2 app. You can get the latest forecasts, weather alerts, radar, Road conditions, much more. The CREM2 app is free to download. Just search for it in your phone's app store. Just a few minutes past noon right now. President Biden made a surprise visit to Ukraine today on his way to visit Poland. It's the president's first trip to the war-torn country since the Russian invasion. CBS News shares the president's message. Remind us that freedom is priceless. It's worth fighting for. With Russia's war in Ukraine raging on, President Biden made a surprise trip to Kyiv, where he met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Russia's aim was to wipe Ukraine off the map. Putin's war of conquest is failing. The president spent about six hours in Ukraine's capital, where he marked the end of the first year of the conflict. One year later, Kyiv stands, and Ukraine stands. Democracy stands. U.S. officials say Russia was notified of the trip some hours before the president arrived, but the movements of the American president were kept secret. After leaving Ukraine, President Biden headed here to Poland to discuss military and humanitarian aid for Ukraine with a broader group of Eastern European leaders. Speaking in Kyiv, the president announced an additional military aid package for Ukraine of around $500 million. That announcement includes artillery ammunition for HIMARS and howitzers, more javelins, anti-armor systems, air surveillance radars to help protect Ukrainian people. Over the weekend, Vice President Harris told a security Last conference in Germany that Russia has committed crimes against humanity in Ukraine. To all of those who have perpetrated these crimes, you will be held to account. The declaration could ultimately lead to war crimes charges against Russian officials. Stephen Portnoy, CBS News, Warsaw, Poland. And former President Jimmy Carter is receiving hospice care at his home in Georgia. After a series of short hospital stays, the 98-year-old decided to forego any further medical care to spend his remaining time at home with his family. 
Carter is the longest living president in American history. He served one term in the White House after defeating incumbent Gerald Ford. After his presidency, he built homes for Habitat for Humanity and established the Carter Center, an organization dedicated to human rights. In 2002, Carter was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for his work in the Middle East and third world nations. Members of Carter's church in Plains, Georgia, honored him in their service yesterday. That's where Carter taught Sunday school for decades after leaving the presidency in 1981. Even on the biggest platform in the world as the commander in chief, he still cared about Mr. Anybody, just little person. He cared about people that much where he wanted to talk about your vacation or how your family was doing. He didn't want to talk about worldly politics and things like that. Um, and so we really learned a lesson from him of even on the biggest stage, you can still be the best person, even when not everybody sees that. And following the news, tributes poured in on social media. President Biden tweeting, may you continue your journey with grace and dignity and God grant you peace. In Georgia, Senator Reverend Raphael Warnock called Carter a man of great faith. It is 12.06 right now. Gonzaga University is planning a prayer service after a student died in a car crash near Ritzfield over the weekend. The Washington State Patrol did identify 18-year-old Diego Garza of Lakewood as the victim. Gonzaga's president says Garza was a junior studying business administration. A community-wide prayer service is scheduled for tomorrow. That'll be at noon. Well, as most of you know, it is tax season and you may have recently received your property tax statements in the mail. Now the state of Idaho is making it easier for homeowners to get some tax relief. Nicole Hernandez breaking down what North Idaho residents need to know. So you can now apply for a property tax relief either on your phone or on your computer. That's because the state of Idaho has moved their property tax reduction program online instead of just in person. So this program specifically can allow some residents to have relief of up to $1,500 from their taxes. Before this year, you had to apply with paper applications, but now the application is also online. So here's who might be eligible for the property tax reduction. Anyone 65 or older, anyone making less than $33,800, former prisoner of wars, people who are motherless or fatherless, specifically minors there, anyone blind or disabled, and anyone who's a widow. Home and landowners will have to fill out this application by the deadline of April 18th. And even if you've been eligible for this and gotten the relief in the past, you do have to apply every single year. In Coeur d'Alene, Nicole Hernandez, Crime 2 News. Coming in new at new, Gonzaga men's basketball players visiting Sacred Hearts Children's Hospital this morning. We just got this video in. It is part of a new assist program, raising money for the Community Cancer Fund. So check it out. You want to match? Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 We love it. Making kids smile when they can. The players visiting with the kids, giving them each a basketball, a headband, and a t-shirt. Now, since the beginning of the season, these five Gonzaga guards have been racking up donations. It works really like a pledge program, so any business or fan can pledge to donate a certain dollar amount every time one of these five players gets an assist. So far, they've made a total of about 274 assists, by the way, raising more than $27,000. It's really uh, brought a fun aspect, you know, to looking at the box score after the game and seeing how many assists we all got and, you know, just knowing that it's, it's going to a great cause and something that we all can get behind. I mean, as soon as we were given this opportunity, we all jumped on it. They're really nice. I was like, wow, it's, it's a great day to come into the thing. So, yeah. Love it, love it. Well, well done to the players and the fans and businesses for getting that done. You can sign up to donate at cfassist.com. Every month a different local organization is in matching any donations that the program gets. Double the money. Love that. In the meantime, the Gonzaga men's basketball team is slowly inching up in the rankings. The Zags are up one spot in the latest AP poll to number 12 over the weekend. We also got our very first look at the NCAA tournament bracket. The basketball committee placing the Zags at a number four seed. The Zags will have a chance to make a big impression this week as they host number 15 St. Mary's. Coming up on Saturday, the Zags need to win to get at least a share of the regular season conference title. And the Gales won't be the only visitors. ESPN's College Game Day is coming to Gonzaga. This weekend it'll be the first time game day has been to Gonzaga in 14 years. Here's good news, the event is free to, t to attend, but tickets are required, so fans can get their hands on those free tickets while they last, beginning tomorrow at noon. 
And the Gonzaga women's basketball team is also moving up in the latest AP poll. The Gonzaga women jumping two spots to number 18. The Zags played their final home game of the season on Saturday, beating St. Mary's. The Gonzaga women were undefeated in the kennel this season and currently have the second longest home winning streak in the country. All right, well done to them. You heard the announcement right there, here in a minute, coming up. Do we have it? Zag Nation. There we go. We're back. All right, all four senior Gonzaga players letting the fans know that they are coming back to the Zags next year. That's huge news, of course, for the team. And we've got... Big news down in Pullman as well. WSU senior DJ Rodman announcing he is returning to the Coos next season. The great part of that video, the news even seemed to catch coach Kyle Smith by surprise as he gave Rodman a huge hug following that announcement.